Good morning, everybody. I just want to welcome all of you here. I also want to give thanks to the Crater for another day. That's one of the things I was taught right away is to give that gratitude. Again, that whole purpose of why we're here as human beings and that relationship building. Before we start anything, the way I've been taught is always to give that acknowledgement and to do a prayer and to ask the Crater to bless our work here today. So if all of you can stand, please. Both my parents were fluent Cree speakers. My dad actually spoke Cree, French, and English, and my chapon, my great-grandfather, spoke Cree, French, English, Latin, and I even heard he could speak Ojibwe. So the impact of the residential schools really uh, made a difference in our people and our ability to have our languages. So my mom's first language is Cree. She's still with us here. My dad passed away nine years ago. And so with that, they thought it was better we didn't know our language. And of course, over time, a lot of regrets there. I'm very grateful that I can still understand a bit of it, and especially when I'm in ceremony working with the elders, and that when they tell me to do things, I can figure out pretty much what they're asking me to do. So I'm really grateful for that. So whatever belief system you have, I just ask that you join me, and that when we're united in prayer, it's beautiful. And this is our way of this whole relationship building. This is how we start things. This is what we do. And I'll teach about that, why we do this. So again, in your own way of prayer. I, I thank you, Crater, for another day. Thank you for my family and friends. Thank you for the power of the circle. Ask that you bless this gathering here today and all the people that are here, that they can open up their hearts and minds to a new way of thinking. That you bless and guide all the indigenous people that have those privileges and those rights to take care of our land to teach people and how to do it in a way that will last for generations to come. And again, to the organizers for all their time and energy that they put into this, all the people that are part of it, the vendors, the artisans, that they too can be here to help teach others. For all of the special guests that are here that are going to be speaking, ask that they do so in a kind and gentle way, again, with the intention of helping Mother Earth. The future is for all of us. The teachings are for all of us. And together, we can walk in that partnership of healing, in that path of knowledge, in reconciliation. Again, Creator, I give you thanks for another day. Aye, hi. Thank you, everybody. You can sit down now. So when I was first asked to help with this project, you know, I'm asked to help with a lot of things. And I'm really grateful for that, that people see me in that light to help. Because as a spiritual leader, as a recognized community leader, it's something that we don't take for granted. It's something that we work hard to try and make sure that when we are helping people, that it's not about us. Even when we pray, it's for the next seven generations. So when I think about the ancestry on my dad's side, the connection from all the way from Black Powder, Big Bear, J.F. Dion, Mary Dion, my dad, myself, my daughter, and my granddaughter, and I look at my granddaughter and I think about those prayers from the past, how that was for them, those children that I have in my life today, my granddaughter. To me, that's beautiful because so often people are so stuck up here in the ego, in the mind, for themselves, what they want, what they want to get out of life for them. So in our way of doing things, especially with how we were as the women were the leaders, because we were co-creators, we were given that gift to give life. We were given that natural ability to see far, to be holistic, to think of everyone. And that whole shift, that whole change when colonialism came. And this reality of this dark history of Canada is coming more and more to light. And it does get a lot of people upset and angry. Those that don't know, even indigenous people, a lot of people that don't know the true history. They walk around with guilt and shame. They're ashamed of who they are, but yet when they learn about their culture and their true history, I see a sense of pride in them because they realize and they understand why their, their ancestors or the people before them, their own family members, are dealing with so much heartache and pain and addictions. This is something that was created on purpose, but now together here we are with relationship building is that together we can make it better. And that's where reconciliation comes that whole concept of what that means. 
quite often people think it's just a government approach that they have to change policy, they have to make things better, it's all on them. No, it's with us as human beings, human beings to human beings, that's what it's about. As people, we have that ability to change our ways, to think differently, to, to have that compassion, to have that understanding, to have that awareness, that's where it begins. Because with that awareness, you get to learn about things, you get a better understanding, then you can have more compassion, you can have more kindness, you can have more patience, and then that leads into the relationship building, because now we can relate to one another. We all have our own journeys, we all have our own stories, we all have our own experiences, good and bad, and from those, that's how we can relate to one another, that's how we can help each other. It's beautiful when you can really sit and talk with someone, so often we're so busy, we're so always thinking about what I have to do next, where I have to be, I have to do this, I have to talk to this person, I have to do this project, I have to, you know, on and on it goes. But how often as a human being do you actually take that time to take care of you? That's where that first relationship is, with you. All these things that we have as human beings, these gifts, these emotions, these experiences, good and bad, I've lived a long life already of a lot of suffering, but through all of that, the thing that has carried me through is my belief in the higher power, my belief in the creator, my hope for a better, better future. My whole career has been about trying to make it better for my kids because I endured a lot of racism growing up and I still deal with that every day when I go shopping. It's tiring and it hurts my heart because I think, you know, I'm here just to shop like everybody else. But I, too, have to re be reminded of where all that comes from. We're talking about hundreds of years of colonialism, people being taught that my people are nothing, we're savages, that we're devil worshippers, all these negative, horrific things, which we're not. And so even newcomers that come here, it still hurts my heart that they follow that. They're leaving their countries where they're leaving war, famine, horrific situations that I would never want to be part of. So when they come here and to still have that attitude towards my people, that does hurt. You know, our teachings are for all nations. The medicine well teaching is the ide ideology I follow because that's what I've been taught. My background being Cree and part Sioux and also Métis, French. So understanding where that comes from. What's beautiful about those teachings with the medicine wheel is that we were praying for all colors of mankind, my ancestors, before all the people came here to this land. To me, that's beautiful because they already knew the prophecies for my people of all these different colors of people coming here. And yet our prayers from back then, still today, we're still praying for everyone. A lot of our teachings, a lot of our ceremonies, Many people are coming to them, all different nationalities. To me, it's beautiful, because that was our prophecy, that was our way, our natural way of doing things, our natural connection to Mother Earth, to Father Sky, to the land, to the water, to the air, to all these things that exist, that has been given to us from the Creator as gifts, and we need to honor them. It's all about choice. As human beings, the four natural laws, such a simple way of living, how I walk, how I talk, how I think, and how I treat others, so simple. And you think about if everybody in the world could follow that, how beautiful this place would be today. So these are things when I think about that concept of relationship building, the gift giving, the offering of tobacco, that first step of protocol, Again, tobacco was never meant for personal use. It's only for ceremony. I've been gifted so many different things in terms of ceremonial rites, doing ceremonies, doing teachings. That was my first one, was given that true teaching of that first medicine. And in doing so, I've had elders and other cultural people, once they hear those teachings that were given to me to share, that actually quit smoking. It hurts me, it hurts other elders that follow this way when people will joke and say, oh, I'm going to go out and smudge my lungs. That's not our way. So when we have this gift 
That's what I taught the coordinators. They helped me make those. So that energy, those intentions are in that gift to help all of the people that are here today. It's bigger than all of us, the spirit work, the connection we have. That's why we have these things where we have an elder to come do a prayer. Because again, it's that spiritual connection, that relationship. When I do this work, I'm doing it on behalf of my ancestors, those that have taught me. When I get offered that tobacco, it's on behalf of all of you that are here. But it's bigger than that. Now it's a relationship where it's asking the Creator to bless this work today, to bless me with the knowledge, the wisdom, the things that I need to say that are for you. That all my intentions, all the work I do is to help people, to make a difference for you in your everyday lives. And like I said, so many of us get so busy and caught up in so much what we think is important. But how many of us actually take the time to just take a moment to reflect, to relax, to take care of yourself? So any relationship you have starts with you first, and then it goes out. And you think about when you throw a rock in the water, that ripple effect. So too your relationship with the land, the relationship with every component that you have in your life. I've been taught that everything has energy. Everything comes from something. So sometimes I laugh because when I'm alone and I bump into a chair, I actually apologize to the chair. And I think if someone was watching, I think I'm crazy. And I think, well, they'd probably be right. <laughs> so when we think about that, that relationship, how we want to see the future, again, thinking about what's better and bigger for all of us, improving each thing we can do. For my people, that intergenerational trauma is there. It's real. But also those teachings of how we're healing. So that reconciliation is that everyone needs to have that awareness. Everyone. And like I said, Indigenous people too. The other side of it is as Indigenous people, what the elders teach is that we have that accountability and responsibility for our own healing. That we need to take that step. That change is only one step that start of it, and that we can't be stuck in a place of hate and anger and resentment and blame, that we too in this position, because I have non-Indigenous people that come cry to me afterwards whenever I speak and apologize for what their ancestors have done, but that's not what this is about, to put blame or to make anyone feel guilty or ashamed. The past is the past. We only know what we know. With knowledge, we can move forward together. Knowledge comes in so many ways and how we have that relationship with ourselves, with others. And that's what this is all about, is that when I came on board and I was asked for guidance and help with this, that's what I said. A lot of people don't know the true history. A lot of people don't understand how to approach Indigenous people to build those relationships. It's about getting that awareness, getting that guidance on how to approach them, to have that respect, to have that kindness, to have that patience. Yes, I go out there and I speak and I teach, but it doesn't mean all of us are in this place. You'll come across people that'll have a lot of hate and anger still, a lot of mistrust. When they see a non-Indigenous person coming to them and saying they wanna work with them. So again, for you to have a little bit patience, not take it personal, and that understanding there's a whole history behind that. This whole thing about empowerment for our people, we have rights. We have things that were put in place because of our ancestors. I even think about my ancestor, Big Bear, the influence impact he had, even how he guided my Chapon, J.F. Dion, who was full-blooded, but in order to be educated, he had to sign script and become a Métis. And in becoming a Métis, then all of a sudden that changed. Again, labels. So for him, with the influence and the power, guidance of Big Bear in Alberta, we have actual settlements for the Métis, and that was based on that reality. And we're the only province in Canada that has a land base for the Métis. So even there, agreements and work that can be done with the Métis on land, land management, opportunities, they're, they're open, they're willing. And it's just a matter of having that understanding, learning, and building those relationships, allowing them to be part of it, and allowing them to have a say allowing them to benefit because it would be benefiting the indigenous people, the communities, that's what it is about. 
is that our future was based on those understandings from our ancestors that knew that we needed to be part of things. We knew we had to have rights. And so those are the things that have come to me to share with you today. I wish that you all have a good day, that there's a lot of learning, sharing, even laughing. Our people, we like to have a lot of humor. So again, I welcome you. I welcome you to this land, this area. And I want to thank the coordinators, and I'm appreciative to be here. So again, I wish you all a good day. Aye, hi.